this is part 11 as far as our lecture series is concerned and in this part as I had told you in the earlier part we shall be dealing right from section 53 up to section 75 of the Indian Penal Code which is of punishments chapter 3 deals with the same. Now if you start reading right from section 53 especially if you refer to section 53 which says the punishments to which offenders are liable under the provision of this code are and it's a question of enumeration of the punishment different kinds of punishment but as a student learning criminal law it is must for you to know what is the purpose that is served by punishing a person who does an act which amounts to an offense and this is exactly what is known as theories of punishment what is the purpose if somebody if somebody commits theft he is convicted by the court of law what is the purpose that is achieved by the court of law or what is the purpose that is achieved by the government uh, uh, is the question for our consideration and hence though it is not nowhere mentioned as far as this chapter is concerned let me right now point out that you i mean you can work out details regarding theories of punishment at the time when you deal with criminology which is a science which deals with behavior of a criminal no doubt about it whether a person is born criminal what compels him to do an act which amounts to an offense what should be the treatment that should be given to him whether i mean the na nature of the punishment punishment will entirely depend upon whether you are going to cure him and see that he becomes a good person or uh, he doesn't I mean, change his attitude at all are the various aspects with which you shall be dealing as far as criminology is concerned yes that is entirely different science with which you are not concerned at present but then let me write in the beginning when we talk about in general punishment what is the object what is the purpose and hence we take into consideration four theories of punishment now the first theory of punishment is what is known as deterrent theory of punishment and what do you mean by deterrent theory of punishment if somebody somebody commits an offense for which he is punished by the court of law now at present we are not considering the reason for which i mean or what was the situation in which he was placed because of which he committed an act which amounts to an offense certainly not but we are only imagining that somebody committed theft i mean theft is by way of illustration it can be any other offense too as I mean, there are various offenses which are defined by various sections of the Indian Penal Code, no doubt about it. Now, if he commits an offense for which he is punished by the court of law, then naturally, in the future, when in the future, when he has undergone a punishment, there is bound to be stigmatization, that is one aspect, no doubt about it that he shall be uh, an accused person becomes an offender only when his guilt is proved beyond reasonable doubt in a court of law yes and now once he is punished by the court of law now the he will uh, he will have to go punishment now there are various punishments there can be i mean punishment there can be a fine can be inflicted there can be imprisonment there can be imprisonment as well as fine i mean as you go on reading the sections which deal with deal with punishment you will come to know that is the offenses are punishable as you just read the sections and you will come to know the in general barring few exception it is the maximum punishment that is laid down minimum sentence is entirely at the discretion of the court of law barring few exceptions like for example when we shall be dealing with section 375 of the indian penal code which defines the offense of theft we will come across section 376 1 and 76 2 where minimum sentence that is required to be passed by the court of law otherwise some other details with which we shall be dealing read section 304 b of the indian penal code which defines doubt which defines the offense of dowry death where the minimum sentence has been laid down in other words the court has got no power to pass a sentence less than that is mentioned as far as the section is concerned but in case of murder even though the maximum punishment is death mind well it is court is not bound by law to inflict a death sentence and then court will naturally take into consideration the age of the person court will take into consideration his family background court will take into consideration social background Court will take into consideration his economic background. Court will take into consideration his cultural background. 
and then the court will try to find out as to what should be the suitable punishment for him, which is that entirely at the discretion of the court of law. So, if imagine a situation where five persons have five persons have committed the they are accused of the offence of murder as per section three hundred and two of the Indian Penal Code. In each case, there won't be a death penalty. In one case, there can be a death penalty. When with which we shall be dealing? In uh, other, in second case, there can be imprisonment for life. In the next case, there can be imprisonment which may be a rigorous imprisonment which may be simple. There can be a fine. So accordingly, the punishment varies upon what punishment varies as per the individual by taking into consideration many factors. Uh, that are always taken into consideration by the court of law to determine the quantum of the punishment and hence when you deal with the provisions of the criminal procedure code you will come to know that there is always argument which is advanced on behalf of the prosecution to inflict him maximum punishment and naturally the defense counsel will try to argue in a court of law say sir i mean your honor the punishment should be as less as possible so this is with which you shall be dealing when you deal with the provisions of the criminal procedure court so now here once a person is convicted by the court of law in the future in the future if at all he is tempted to do the same act which was which he had done in the past for which he was convicted by the court of law he was in the jail or he was asked to pay a fine so always i mean before he takes a decision or before he thinks of implementing the idea that he has got in the mind he will think 10 times last time i had committed an offense for which i was asked to undergo imprisonment or i i was asked to pay the fine now i mean if this is the case then naturally the punishment punishment there may be enhancement of the punishment there may be i mean severe punishment also which i, I will have to undergo and Nobody, unless he is a person who is abnormal, unless I mean he doesn't I mean think rationally, nobody will like to undergo imprisonment when he is kept in the jail or nobody likes stigmatization. Everybody will like that he is praised by everybody and not stigmatized by everybody. And hence that is the reason which will set lesson to him in the future when he wants to do an act which amounts to an offense that will, I don't say he will never but to certain extent deter him and hence this is what is known as deterrent theory of punishment. Is it whether the effect of this theory is with respect to him only? No. When society at large will come to know that somebody who had committed an offence in the past was convicted by the court of law, naturally whenever he wants to commit an offence as that was committed by somebody then naturally will think I mean, if I commit an offence and if I am arrested and if I have taken before the court of law, I will have to undergo uh, undergo punishment as if, as that person had to go, and hence it will set a lesson to the society at large. And this is exactly, in short, what is known as deterrent theory of punishment. With this now. The second theory of punishment to which we have to refer to or which is I mean which is advanced is what is known as retributive theory of punishment. And what is the basis of a retributive theory of punishment? An eye for an eye or truth for a truth. If A has done some wrong to Mr. B, he will also do wrong when some wrong is done to Mr. A, he has got what is known as he his, uh, his uh, element of revenge is satisfied. And then, for example, he will have sense of revenge as long as I mean he doesn't do the same act. Now, instead of taking law into his own hands, when this is done by the uh, this is done by the court of law, he will at least have satisfaction that when I mean he committed offence with respect to my property, he committed the offence with respect to the person, or he committed any offence for which he is punished by the court of law. So this is what is known as retributive theory of punishment where you have satisfaction that somebody who has done wrong is punished by the court of law accordingly this is exactly what is known as retributive theory of punishment now in the past when i mean this is a time where we are not considering past or in the past when the uh, human beings used to live in groups if somebody used to have cut hand of somebody from one group in order to take revenge, somebody from the 
uh, from that group used to cut hand of anybody not only who had cut the hand of anybody and then he used to say an eye for an eye or tooth for tooth it was the law which was prevailing at that at that particular time but today also i mean to certain extent yes if somebody uh, gives one blow to me and if he is punished by the court of law i will definitely have satisfaction psychological satisfaction that he by giving me one blow he committed the offense of voluntarily causing hurt because of which he is punished by the court of law so i will have that satisfaction this is exactly what do you mean by retributive theory of punishment now they say that this has been outdated but i personally feel when you will i mean start dealing understanding different aspects as far as criminal law is so today also so the, at that time those were human beings today also we are human beings no doubt about it nobody is in, nobody is saint in this world and hence if you do wrong with respect to me i mean it's not that i can take law into my own hands because that i mean can i do so certainly not because when we will deal with the right of private defense of the body you will come to know or maybe right of private defense of the property you will come to know that you a right ends when the danger to the body or danger to the property ends that is the aspect so you can't say there you have you have got right to defend your body and the body of any other person you have got right to defend your property and the property of any other person and this is when with which we shall be dealing but here this is not that somebody has thrown stone into your direction you take the same stone and throw it into his direction this is not allowed by the law but if the matter goes to the court of law and is punished by the court of law accordingly that will definitely serve the purpose to serve an extent as far as retributive theory of punishment is concerned with this now when we talk about preventive theory of punishment when the person is behind the bars he is under the control of the jailer when he is outside the jail he can do anything i mean whatever may be the consequences but till that time he is arrested by the police he can do anything but when he is in the jail till the time he is under behind the four walls it may not be possible for him to do an act which amounts to an offense and hence this will prevent him from doing an act which amounts to an offense is exactly what is meant by preventive theory of punishment with this now with this preventive theory of punishment the last theory of punishment is what is known as a reformative theory of punishment and what is the object of reformative theory of punishment reformative theory of punishment deals with or aims at rehabilitation it says that you select nature of the punishment in such a manner so that so that the person can become he will start repenting for whatever he had done in the past and once he starts repenting for whatever he has done in the past in the future in the future as far as the future is concerned in the present he can become a good person and hence when we talk about a reformative theory of punishment they say they say i mean this is of recent origin but then in the past also there was this in the past also there was this type of punishment and hence it cannot be said that it is of recent origin but what it says at it was said by father of the nation mahatma gandhi head the sin and not the sinner so what should be the nature of the punishment nature of the punishment should be so that it is possible for you to crush the criminality within the human and not the humanity within the criminal and because of which it is right it has been rightly said that no person is born criminal details whether the person is born criminal or not or i mean what cannot be cured must be endured endured are the aspects with which you shall be dealing as far as criminology that science is concerned but in general in general uh, as a human being you like to do good things and hence if you had done bad thing if you had bad done bad thing and if you are repeating for the bad thing that is done by you then naturally naturally i mean you will think that well i have i am repenting for whatever i have i had done in the past and now and hence mind well as a student of law 
in the criminal in the Indian Penal Code when we shall be dealing with two sections, namely section 73 and section 74 as far as this chapter is concerned, we will come across solitary confinement. If a person is kept in a cell where he is alone, where there is no interaction with anybody, that is the time when you are in a, you are alone that you start thinking and then you start thinking of past and when you start thinking of past if it is possible for you to realize one thing that whatever is done by you in the past was not good of course chances no doubt about it i i don't say one who has committed the offense of theft and is convicted by the court of law he will never so that is i mean the reason the reason is that no theory works in isolation no theory works independently all theories have overriding effect over each other and this is the cumulative effect which has to be taken into consideration as a student of criminal law. So when we talk about deterrent theory of punishment, it sets a lesson to that person, it sets a lesson to the society at large that is an example that if you do wrong, if bad thing is done by you, you, you have to pay for that, that is one thing. When you talk about retributive theory of punishment, somebody has done wrong for which he is punished by the court of law. Well, if you have satisfaction that well, he, I mean, he had done wrong to me because of which he is punished by the court of law. Preventive theory that when he is in the jail, when he is under the control, he for, at least for that particular period of time, not forever, he is prevented from doing an act which amounts to an offense. And with this now, as we have started, I mean, and almost finished with what is known as the reformative theory of punishment. Now, this aspect of reformative theory of punishment will be taken into consideration by you at the time of learning the provisions of the Provision of Offenders Act of 1958. We had such a provision in the, in the Criminal Procedure Code as far as Section 360 of the Criminal Procedure Code is concerned. But because of the passing of the Probation of Offenders Act, and there you will come to know what are the powers that are given to the court of law. Even though the guilt of the accused person is proved beyond reasonable doubt and he becomes an offender, the court, instead of directly telling him, go to the jail, and then when he goes to the jail, he will have to, he will have to mix with the criminals. And when he is in with the criminal, man is known by the company he keeps, there is every chance or possibility for him to become a hardened criminal. Hence, as per the provisions of the Probation of Offenders Act, the court has got power to release a person after due admonition. Or there is a provision where the person is required to execute a bond that he shall be, he shall be a good person as far as his behavior in the future is concerned. Yes. There is a provision with which you, you can deal and this is exactly what I say simultaneously, simultaneously start I mean, learning law, not only I mean don't say they are dealing with the provisions of the Indian Penal Code only, no, it's possible for you to learn many other provisions provided you go on I mean thinking in the manner in which I mean I have just shown a direction. I don't claim that I have, to, I have dealt with everything, no certainly not, it is impossible but at least you will start thinking. You will start reading section 360 of the Criminal Procedure Code. You will start reading the Provision of Offenders Act of 1958. Well, if the person who has done an act which amounts to an offense, if it is he is under 18 years of age, we have Juvenile Justice Care and Protection of Children Act of 2000. And that deals with what? That deals with the child, the person who is under 18 years of age. And then it also deals with the child in conflict with law or child in need of care and protection. So that you will understand. So there is a provision and entirely different treatment, entirely different treatment is given to one who is under 18 years of age. So it is, it may be because of the age that it is not possible. He has not attained that maturity and hence, I mean, such a person cannot be straightway, I mean, sent to the jail. Certainly not. And hence, I mean, entirely different approach. So this is, what is this? This is exactly the basis as far as the basis as far as the reformative theory of punishment is concerned. You ask a person to be in the jail in a particular cell when he has committed a serious offense, 
I mean, there is chance or possibility that he will start repenting. And once he starts repenting, mind well, when he will come out of the jail, there is every chance or possibility that he may become a good person. So what we want, we want good persons in the society. We don't want criminals in the society. We don't want bad element in the society. And exactly this care has been taken by the legislature accordingly. It's a question of implementation. Implementation not in its word but in its spirit and hence this is what is done as far as the first part I mean though nowhere mention mind well when as a student of criminal law you come to know what is the purpose as far as the punishing an individual who has done an act which amounts to an offense is concerned we take into consideration deterrent theory of punishment now this can go on for hours to get a no doubt about it but there is a limitation and hence I mean once I mean, I, as I have told you, once I have shown you the direction, once I have shown you the direction in which you should proceed so that it is possible for you to reach your goal or the object, well, it is for you to. You, I mean, in the Bayer Act, you won't find out anything, but there are n number of books which are available. In this chapter, on a, you take, take out any book written by any author and then you, fi you find out details as far as theories of punishments are concerned. You read, I mean, the criminology and you come to know the theories of punishment. And hence, this is the approach that you should follow from the point of view of understanding this. With this now, with this now, the next part that we are going to take into consideration as far as this chapter of punishments is concerned, right from section 53 up to section 75 of the Indian Penal Code is concerned, where we shall be taking into consideration different kinds of punishment. So, at the time of learning different kinds of punishments also it may not be possible for me to work out all the details but then i will definitely point out the provisions that you should read so that it becomes possible for you to understand the part with which we are dealing and hence during the next part as far as the next part of series of lectures is concerned we shall deal with different kinds of punishment as far as the indian penal code is concerned